Hey folks here at OS Reviews. The premise of smart internet connected alarm clocks have been mostly replaced by smartphones and wearables out of utility. However, a few years back we saw the rise and eventual decline of the Chumbi, an interesting Wi-Fi connected series of alarm clocks which ran on a proprietary Linux operating system and was capable of playing back some basic YouTube clips, showing off some weather information, RS feeds, news feeds, Google searches, and also acted as a Wi-Fi radio, which was quite nifty. However, it was quite bulky and wasn't too practical as far as portability was concerned, and the price point was also a little bit steep, despite the advantages of having a window into the web right next to your bed. Otherwise, you can now find the Chumbi on Amazon or eBay for about 50 bucks used, which isn't uh, a really terrible buy, I'd say. It still is quite useful to have, as long as you know what you're getting. So today we're taking a retro look back and a retro review at the Chumbi. Now, a 7-inch version that was licensed by Sony called the Sony Dash is also available and runs on the same operating system and is capable of running on the same apps as well. But this Chumbi here has a 3.5-inch screen, the same screen size as the original iPhone and the iPhone 4S. However, it uses a resistive technology, which means that it's made out of plastic and is pressure sensitive. You have to use your nails or use a stylus, which isn't too convenient. Uh, definitely not as sensitive as capacitive glass screens that we have today. On the front, there's also a built-in mic. The top features an oversized snooze key along with a mono speaker. The sides features a wheel, which you can tap on to go through the very various menus and apps that are running on the Chumbi, which can also be accessed and managed on a computer when you create an account. The back features ventilation grills to prevent overheating, some basic info about the Chumbi, a full-size USB port if you want to expand memory and add a few uh, games or videos as well as uh, files to store into the Chumbi, a power on off switch, a 3.5mm headphone jack, as well as a proprietary 5 volt charging port. The bottom features access to the battery door, however the rechargeable battery actually did not come included when you purchased it, you had to get it separately which is a bit disappointing. It also has an antenna because you can use it as a traditional radio in addition to a Wi-Fi radio, kind of funky. The Chumbi also had a earlier version, the little like shape which I thought was a bit more attractive and it also used a few other sensors like uh, accelerometers and squeeze sensors for you to interact with apps and games that made it unique. But everything else in terms of the internals and how it performs with uh, apps is basically the same. So next we're going to turn the unit on and show you guys the interface of the Chumbi and we're going to do a quick tour from the software side of things. And we are in luck because I managed to find the original Chumbi. I managed to dig it up and this is what it looks like. So a bit of a jump cut here, uh, but for the purposes of this retro look back, I guess we'll be just be booting through with this one instead of the Chumbi 1, which is technically the second generation Chumbi. So here's a bit of a comparison side by side. You can see the size difference about the same, more or less. The original one is slightly larger because of this pillow-like form factor, but everything in terms of the display, 3.5 inches diagonally, remains virtually unchanged. So taking a quick look here, you can see that it has this very soft pillow-like shape. It comes in a number of different colors that you can customize it with. And what's unique about this one is the snooze key is actually a squeeze sensor. So you can also use it in a few apps and games where you can kind of squeeze on the sides of this to interact uh, with the Chumbi and go back to the main menu screen. So that's kind of unique. Uh, otherwise, the back features the typical port, basically the same as the Chumbi 1 that we saw earlier. And there is another type of uh, charging plug, which is proprietary and doesn't use the same type of plug as the Chumbi 1. It also doesn't have an internal battery, so it needs to be plugged in at all times. The screen itself can be popped off like so to reveal the battery module on the inside, but again, it doesn't really hold uh, a charge. It's meant as a backup battery pack, and that's basically it. So you can kind of see the circuitry and the wiring on the inside. There's an LED light on the front. So we're going to turn this on next and just give you guys a quick look. Uh, I don't have too much stuff installed on the original Chumbi here, basically just the alarm app, but um, if I had more stuff on here like a YouTube client, you can see that it does a good job of playing back videos on the screen. The quality of the screen is decent, it's not an IPS panel, but view angles are acceptable. And it has a decent speaker as well, but it's a mono speaker as opposed to stereo speakers. And so those features are pretty much expected. You have that Twitter client, so on and so forth, uh, weather client, and a bit of streaming services that just acts as a internet radio through Pandora and other channels. This is what the boot up process looks like. It takes a little longer than the uh, actual 
Chum B1 if I restart to normal operations. It seems like you also have the ability to install updates using a thumb drive uh, or using Wi-Fi, of course. And uh, it boots up slowly and starts in this monochrome black and white format and slowly adds color uh, before it goes into this more typical blue tone that we have come to expect from uh, the company's logos. So this is what uh, it looks like. Instead of having the A on one of the eyes, which was the setup screen, uh, we're now going through to the main UI. So it's probably going to start up and show us just the typical alarm clock function, uh, which is what the Chumbi will be displaying most of the time if you get one of these and use it as a bedside alarm clock. Uh, when you're done, you can also toggle back and forth between things like inverted modes if you want to view it more easily at night. So there you are, that's the transition. It kind of matches the overall look and finish. Definitely a very cute product. Uh, so here we are, this is the alarm view. You can see the time uh, as well as the date information down below. It's not exactly right anymore because we've unplugged this from power for so long. But if you want to exit out of this, I can press the top. And there we are. To cycle through the various other apps, this is what the main UI would look like. You go back and forth between things like uh, looking at settings, looking at you know YouTube, and that would open a slightly different window, and you can tap on that window to access that new uh, app. So it's kind of like multitasking, except it really just uses one app at a time. I can change things from the main menu screen here, such as alarm. I can play back a bit of music as well. If I have music preloaded, I can also send an email, of course, and set up Wi-Fi in the settings, uh, delete this application if I want to, and then, of course, sync it with my Chumbi account, which I create online. Uh, Chumbi services are no longer you know, as, as sharp as they, as they once were. Creating an account can be a bit of a challenge if you're just getting a new one, so that's something to quickly note. Uh, here we have some information information about the squeeze sensors, a touchscreen recalibration since it's using resistive as opposed to capacitive, the time zone differences, internet network differences, and when you're done you can just go back into that. Uh, favorite channels, screen settings, colors, and things that you can customize this with. Pressing done takes me back into the screen. So that's basically the main mechanisms of how the Chumbi operated. Uh, and you can see here it definitely works and it's a nice little uh, kind of Wi-Fi connected smart alarm clock. Still something kind of nifty, I suppose, if you want a internet streaming uh, device, an internet radio, uh, the price of one of these used Chumbis alone, I think really justifies that. But uh, in terms of actually using a smart alarm clock, that function has really been replaced uh, and, and filled by our smartphones and tablets. Thanks for watching this retro look back here at OS Reviews. This has been the Chumbi.